All right, everybody. Good Sunday afternoon. Was streaming, watching Red Zone, watching these games, getting some reasonable results, laughing at the Cardinals. Things were going good. And then, well, we've got some things going on with the Seahawks now. And like most things with the Seahawks so far this season, it, it's not good. And not only is it not good, it's what I was afraid of. And it was the scenario that I brought up a few days ago when this whole COVID thing kind of blew up and they decided to move our game in the first place. So, uh, first thing is, uh, first thing is that the Rams are starting to get some of their players back. OBJ is off the COVID list. Um, uh, Jalen Ramsey is now off the COVID list. Uh, they got some other players back as well. I, I don't know about Sebastian Joseph Day yet. I don't know about Rab ha Rob Havenstein yet or uh, Troy Reader yet. Th th they have a couple things to still clear potentially, but their situation is getting a lot better, particularly with getting uh, Jalen Ramsey. So that's starting to clear up. Meanwhile, our situation is starting to get a little muddier. And uh, I just wanted to go ahead and jump on in the middle of my stream here. Obviously, I'm still streaming. You can see the chat. Say hi. Say hi, chat. But, um, yeah, I, I put the tweet on screen. The Seahawks have put six more players on the COVID-19 list per Brady Henderson. Cornerback DJ Reed. That's a big one. Right tackle Brandon Shell. Probably wasn't going to play anyway, so whatever. Running back Travis Homer. Not without his value. The defensive end Kerry Hyder. Not without his value. Cornerback Mike Jackson and Pierre-Olivier Lestage center. So that's, those are fine. Those are practice squatters. So we've got a problem that is getting bigger, and the Rams are having a problem that is getting smaller. So you see where this is going, guys? You see what's going on here? We've still got the rest of today. We've got tomorrow, and then we've got Tuesday before the game. Things can still happen. All right, and the Rams are probably going to get some players back. Like I don't know about they might get Higby back as well. He's he's currently on the COVID list. He could come off. So we are headed towards a scenario where because they delayed the game, the Rams might end up having most, if not all, of their key guys back, while the Seahawks end up down a lot of players because of the delay. As of right now, this is not impossible to manage, but it will head that way very quickly if things spread the way they spread for other teams. Yeah, uh, remember when I kind of defended the NFL for this decision? I even had a couple people get mad at me for it, but I, I, try, I try to be objective with these things. I do. I try to be real. I try to look at it and go, okay, obviously they're not going to let a team forfeit. They're not going to give up the revenue from a f game. Um, they're not going to... They're, they're not going to do these things that take away money from themselves. They're not going to put the Rams behind the eight ball. I mean, the, the Cardinals just lost to the Lions. So if the Rams actually had to forfeit this game, that would have massive implications on the season. So I, I don't think you should make them forfeit. I don't think you should force them to play a game they have no real chance of winning or have a massively crippled chance of winning. I understand that. The, the, this new variant of COVID... It, it, it hits a little differently, and they decided they were going to change th the way they were dealing with COVID because of it. I, I have no beef with that. But the beef for me starts here, where it's looking like it's at least realistic, very realistic, that the Seattle Seahawks will go into this game with a lot, maybe even like, it, it, we've seen how fast this thing spreads. It could be like half the roster can't play. Are they going to make us play the game then? Are they going to say, no, we can't delay the game again. Sorry, you, you just got to deal with it. Are they going to make us forfeit? What What are they going to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this is where I start to look at Roger Goodell and go like, what, what the hell, dude? What, what the hell? I mean, forget about winning. Forget about making the playoffs. I want to at least be able to field a real team so we can see what's up with some of these guys. Like I said... This is an evaluation period for some of these players. This is an opportunity to say, okay, that guy, um, that guy can be part of the future. Or, oh, I thought that guy was going to be part of the future, but he's not really showing me anything right now. 
So I want to at least be able to play the game with a decent roster. So now this is starting to spiral into a really bad situation. And I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to... If our roster is crippled for this game, like like beyond this, like DJ Reed and Brandon Shell and Travis Homer and Kerry Hyder Jr., that sucks. But you can play a game without guys like that. That's that's understandable. Brandon Shell's injury prone anyway. However, if this gets a lot worse and they still make us play this game, then I'm gonna have a very different video to upload in the next couple of days. Trust me, I'm gonna go off. I will lose it. It will be YouTube gold. So it hasn't happened yet. For all we know, this is it. For all we know, the Rams aren't going to get their players back. Higby could still be out. Havenstein could still be out. Sebastian Joseph Day could still be out. And then it's whatever. But we're going to see where this goes. And I don't like where this is headed right now. I'll say that. And um, I'm going to get back to watching football right now. Obviously, look, I'm not one of these guys who's all super amped up on the playoffs. I recognize it is a mathematical possibility, but that's about all I recognize right now. But I want to be able to put a watchable product out there. I want to have a chance to win. I don't want this game to be a farce. And more than anything, I don't want the NFL to basically make it obvious that they're, you know, doing a favor for the Rams, but they won't do the exact same thing for us in the exact same situation. Like, if they actually do this, if they actually decide to make us play with our roster completely corked because of COVID, then uh, straight up, what I want this team to do, I'm not even kidding when I say this, go out there for that game, kneel down on every single snap, punt the ball, and then stand there on defense and let the Rams score a free touchdown every game. Turn the game into a farce. Make the game just as farcical as Roger Goodell made this process farcical if it comes to that. And, you know, I said in my video, like I said, I defended what the NFL did. What the NFL did was completely understandable, but... If the, it did open up a can of worms, and the can of worms is starting to open. So, it, it look, I, I I am understanding of the NFL wanting to have games played. I, I understand the NFL wants to give teams a chance to win. I know they don't want to, you know, cripple the Rams' chances of winning the division because they, um, they, they had to forfeit a game for something that was out of their control. But if they're not going to extend the same courtesy to us, if they're not going to hold the Rams at least somewhat accountable for this game being moved, then now we have an issue. Now we have an issue, and um, I'm, I'm going to hope that this uh, team is able to recognize the horse crap that that would be and act accordingly because I don't want to see this uh, team with half a roster going up against the Rams. I really don't. We're not going to learn anything and we're not really going to have a chance, any chance at all of even making it competitive, probably. All right, so I will see you guys later on coming to the stream. It's my birthday. Wish me a happy birthday. See y'all later. Go Hawks.